Solomon's Vegas Adventures. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Solomon from Solomon's Vegas Adventures. And today, we've got an interesting adventure for you. We're going to go explore an abandoned uranium mine out by Gold Butte. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go. Let's see what we find. So first, some background on uranium and uh, some of the chemistry of it and the uh, decay, the radioactive decay of uranium. Now, uranium is touted as a very dangerous element, and while it is very dangerous, it does decay in complex manners. Um, so uranium-238 is the naturally occurring isotope of uranium in nature, and it actually undergoes alpha decay to thorium-234, um, and it eventually decays into lead, which is its stable isotope. Now, alpha decay does not actually break the skin barrier um, when you are around it. Um, it emits alpha particles, which are helium uh, molecules. Um, but the real danger when you're around uranium, especially in uranium ore and around uranium rocks, is that radon-222, which is a carcinogenic gas that causes lung cancer that is associated with the decay of uranium. So that's quite dangerous. Um, the naturally occurring mineral of uranium uh, that you will find at this mine is carnitite, which is a hydrous potassium uranium vanadate. The chemical formula reads as follows. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So going there and looking at the rocks is not going to kill you. I would strongly advise against collecting samples because having radioactive uh, rocks in your vicinity is not healthy at all. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, it decays into radon gas, which is quite toxic. So just looking at the rocks is fine, but we're not going to collect any specimens and we're not going to touch anything. And we're definitely not going to walk into that mine. But those are just some cautions before going out here that I would like to outline. Now, nuclear radiation can be measured in a myriad of different units, but the three units that the Geiger counter I have measures nuclear radiation in are CPM, or counts per minute, USVH, which is microsieverts per hour, and MRH, which is millirentengens per hour. Um, now, all of these units are measures of ionizing radiation, which is subatomic particles or electromagnetic waves that have sufficient energy to ionize atoms or molecules by detaching electrons from them. So CPM is counts per minute, which means number of ionization events per minute. And microsieverts per hour and millirentengens per hour are just derivations of counts per minute. Um, so each count is each ionizing event, so basically one ionizing event means that electrons have been detached once. So this chart outlines, um, you know, basically the levels of radiation. So the unit that I'm concerned with is microsieverts per hour because that's my unit of choice for measuring radiation. Uh, 0.03 to 0.33 is considered normal background levels of radiation. Uh, the normal background levels of radiation at my house are actually like 0.04 to 0.1 about. Um, so anything above 0.33, you know, there's definitely some radioactive isotopes around. Between 0.33 and 0.65 is considered a medium level of radiation. So if you're at that level, you definitely have some radioactive stuff around you. Um, even above a 0.2, there's kind of weakly radioactive stuff going on. Um, Above a 0.65 and below a 6.5 in that ballpark, that's considered a high level of radiation. So the chart says to closely watch the reading, find out why. Um, the rocks that we're dealing with here, like the uranium ore, they will have a radiation level in this ballpark, um, probably between a 0.65 and about a 2, 2.5. Two this chart says that anything between a 6.5 and a 13 in microsieverts per hour is considered very high. Leave the area ASAP and find out why. And I thought this was kind of funny. Anything above a 13 is considered extremely high. Evacuate immediately. Report to government. Uh, I just found that kind of nutty. Um, but anyways, that's basically the breakdown of radiation levels. We're not going to see anything as in, in a 13 or 6.5 range, thank God. That would be quite dangerous. Um, but without further ado, enough chit chat and, uh, let's go on that adventure. Let's see what we find. So there isn't an official name of this uranium mine, um, but it's out by Gold Butte, uh, on the way to Gold Butte, uh, town site, which is like an old ghost town by Gold Butte. Um, so it's two hours and 45 minutes from Vegas, 111 miles, and you're going to need a four by four vehicle to get here, or at least a high clearance. Uh, the road to Gold Butte is a dirt road. 
Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take I-15 up north towards Mesquite, get off at exit 112, um, take that, and then you'll see signs for Gold Butte National Monument, and then I would say drive the road for about 30, 35 miles, and you'll see it on the side. It's on the, uh, the left-hand side on one of those buttes. Uh, you'll see it. What's going on, guys? Solomon here with Solomon's Vegas Adventures. I got my Geiger counter handy, and uh, we're going to go check out this abandoned uranium mine. And uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm gonna put this baby to the test. Let's do it. That little trail up there is where the abandoned uranium mine is. Uh, it dates back to the 1950s. Uh, it's a carnotite prospect. Uh, so we're gonna go up there and uh, see some radioactive stuff. Now, I do wanna note that it's not like super dangerous just to see the rocks, uh, which is what we're gonna do. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna explore that abandoned uranium mine. Let's do it. So the background radiation here, 0.12 to 0.14 microsieverts per hour. So uranium itself, when it decays, the naturally occurring isotopes of uranium, uranium-238, which is what you'll find in rocks, um, that emits alpha radiation and decays into thorium-234. So alpha radiation and alpha decay, the particles actually don't break the skin, so you're fine in that respect. What you've got to worry about in terms of dealing with radioactive rocks is inhaling radon gas. Radon is a carcinogen, causes cancer, specifically lung cancer, and uh, radon-222 is one of the radioactive decay products of uranium-238. So breathing in radon is the biggest hazard you have associated with radioactive rocks, but if you're just looking at rocks outside and they happen to be radioactive, you're fine. You just don't want to eat them, you don't want to lick them, and you don't want to spend like your entire life with them. But if you're just looking at them, it's fine. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go find some radioactive rocks. Let's do it. Out here in Gold Butte, very pretty, very golden scenery, just uh, among the Joshua trees. Very beautiful. And uh, just a brief geology lesson on the way up here. Uh, the uranium ore here occurs in the mineral carnotite, which is, as previously stated, a hydrous potassium uranium vanadate. And uh, the depositional environment of this uranium deposit is a sedimentary hosted deposit, uh, which is really common in the Four Corners region. And uh, the host rock is sandstone, shale, siltstone, all that. And basically uranium just kind of finds its way into where there's like petrified wood and stuff in these types of deposits. And uh, that's what we'll see up here. As we're getting further up the mountain, closer towards the mine, our background radiation levels are going up about twice as much as they were down by the car at about 0.23 to 0.25 microsieverts per hour. And uh, the mine itself is up that ridge. So far, real great views as we're coming up towards the uranium mine. That's Tramp Ridge over there. And as you guys can see, once you get up here from down there, the road follows this side of the ridge at about this level. The reason being is because geologically, this is where the uranium deposits. This hill is very steeply dipped. The layers in this hill are very steeply dipped this way towards the east. So the west exposes all of the rock layers. And uh, because of that, the rock layer that is the principal ore of uranium is at about this level. There's definitely some uranium in this uh, sandstone right here. See that radiation level going up? That's uh, about, <laughs> that is about six times the background level here. You guys see this yellow green looking crap? It's carnitite, it's a vein of carnitite. And as you can see, the Geiger counters picking up a reading from said carnitite. Yeah, it's beeping at us, telling us that that's a dangerous level of radiation. At 0.71, <laughs> it's still going up. Just this inconspicuous looking yellowy crap is radioactive. Carnitite, just a small amount. You can see these radioactive veins here. 
So here's some of that uh, radioactive carnotite bearing veinage right there. And you can see they had a little exploration drift here back in the 1950s or so. And uh, yeah, not at the mine yet, but working our way there. And uh, it seems like the background radiation has gone up. So we're getting close. So here is that abandoned mine. Uh, yeah, you can see the, you can hear the Geiger counters background radiation levels are going up uh <laughs> yeah it's it's very small you know it's just a little hole all the way to the back but yeah i would not go in there uh because as i was telling you guys the harm with radioactive stuff is that radon gas which you really don't want to breathe in and in a place like that yikes big yikes yeah the background radiation levels are at like 0.4 microsieverts per hour we haven't even put it on a rock. Let's put it on some uranium ore and see what kind of readings we get. Quite high levels of radiation emanating from inside the mine. Not surprising, probably all that radon gas. Looks like it's stabilizing at about 1.4 microsieverts per hour, which is very high. Like this is high levels of uranium. Like this is high levels of radiation, at least according to the government. Damn. The normal background is 0 0.1. Right? Yeah, the normal background is 0 0.1, so this is 13, 14 times that. Anything between 0.66 and 6.5 microsieverts per hour is considered high levels of radiation. Anything above 6.5 is, like, deadly. So, we got high levels of radiation here, but it's not going to kill us or give us cancer. It's provided we don't tarry. See all this yellow-looking stuff? That's all carnitite. That's all that uranium ore. All right, now let's find a vein of it. We're right outside the mine. Here's some nice visuals of that carnitite ore, that bright yellowy neon looking stuff. So rule of thumb, if something looks bright and neon-y like that in nature, probably radioactive. Yeah, I'm gonna get a reading of that with my Geiger counter here. Seems to still be going off down there, huh, Yubes? Yeah. Schnikes. You see that yellowy stuff right there? That's carnitite. Let's, let's see this. Yes, very high readings. Very high readings of radiation. That, it's almost 1.5 microsieverts per hour. That's wild. Carnitite right there. Check these ones. Oh, it likes that one. Oh, shnikes. Of 1.6 microsieverts per hour. 1.7. Oh. Will we hit two? I think so. Oh. oh, that is absolutely wild. We're at over two microsieverts an hour of radiation coming right off that carnitite. Wow, and it is still going up. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Will we get to three? Stabilizing at around 2.8 microsieverts per hour. Oh, wait, maybe going up. Yeah, 2.9. It's wild. That is wild. You know, guys, I've seen people going in this mine on the internet. Yeah, I would highly caution against that. I mean, if we're getting readings of almost three microsieverts an hour out here at the edge of the mine, yeah, just don't go in there if you don't want cancer. Nevada's Chernobyl. And you, bet you went to Chernobyl, right? 
Yep. What was the level of radiation that you were exposed to at Chernobyl? Um, it was about over the course of the uh, of the trip. Um, I was exposed to about three or four total, but there were spots that hit over 100 microsieverts. Right, and that is absolutely insane. 100 microsieverts is enriched uranium, just yeah. highly deadly. But three microsieverts, four microsieverts, very high. Yeah, that's that's that is really high. That's about that's that's a little less than what you you would be exposed to normally over the course of one year. Right. One so, year's worth of radiation, right there. One year's worth of radiation. Not radiation living your life. You know? Yeah, here at this abandoned uranium mine in Gold Butte. So, Nevada's Chernobyl. This is radiation levels similar to that of Chernobyl. So, I would not go in there. We've seen our uranium ore here, here, also up there. And as you can see, the background radiation here is quite high. And the, and the radiation levels of this particular layer of uranium-bearing sandstone is that of Chernobyl at 3 microsieverts per hour. Well, 2.9, about 3. So that's absolutely insane, guys. So... It's uranium mine here in Gold Butte. Cool locality, but don't tarry. We're going to get our uh, little butts out of here because uh, I don't like being exposed to a year's worth of radiation. And uh, it's not just uranium-238 that you're exposed to. You're exposed to thorium-234, radium-226, radon-222. There's a lot of, you know, isotopes that uranium decays into before it stabilizes at lead. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Shall we get out? Yeah. Let's do it. And uh, now that we're out of the mine, you can see that it's stabilizing closer to normal levels. We're still at a moderate level. Anything above 0.33 microsieverts is considered moderate uh, between 0.33 and 0.66. But yeah, that mine, highly radioactive. Highly radioactive. Great views, Virgin Peak there. And uh, we're getting back down to safer levels, but geez louise, guys. Well, that was the abandoned uranium mine out here at Gold Butte, uh, Nevada's Chernobyl. Um, and uh, it was a good adventure, you know? I just got a year's worth of uh, radiation exposure just in the last 20 minutes, so uh, cool. Yeah, hopefully I don't get cancer. Oh, this thing's still going off. Oh, come on now, stabilize. Okay, there we go, 0.58. Good. So, uh, yeah, this is a cool place to go to, but I do not recommend going in that mine. That's horrible. Horrible idea. Uh, I've seen people breathing on the in internet doing it. Yeah, breathing in radioactive dusk is not advisable. Um, so, yeah, uh, luckily we're all good, and uh, hopefully uh, there aren't any future complications due to this. Any future new fingers or hands. Right, yeah. We'll be okay. You know, that's that uranium ore in nature, but super cool. I mean, as, as a geologist, just coming out here and doing some science, which is what this is, even though I didn't write a report or anything, uh, pretty amazing. So uh, you can see it from the side of the road. And uh, I mean, you could walk up to it. I mean, like, as long as you're not in that mine, you're probably good because, you know, the ventilation outside is better. Um, but yeah. You'll be good. Just don't try to like, sniff the rock that's, yeah that's the biggest thing. don't lick the rock don't sniff it don't spray it on your bleeding wounds don't do anything yeah, like the radiation that radiation wouldn't penetrate your skin or anything like that the issue comes when you like actually inhale or you know eat right radioactive material right that, that's when it does it does its damage from the inside indeed great views of virgin peak and joshua trees coming down from said uranium mine thanks for uh Tuning into our radioactive adventure. Yeah. Solomon's Atomic Adventures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was horrid. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And check out some of our other adventures right here. As always, guys, peace.